set 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. An attempted robbery turns deadly. What we're now learning in what San Antonio police are saying about the suspect. San Antonio police also responding to a deadly car crash overnight. What they found inside one of those vehicles. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, the sun is up. The temps staying down though. It says it's only 70 degrees out there. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But for now, good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday. It is September 17th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Good morning. We're going to be completely honest. I had a water bottle here on the table. And Sarah Coaster just took it away. It was weird. It was. It I was called match. a hydration king yesterday. Oh my god. Oh, we're bringing the water bottle back. Please. See, there was nothing like. I want to like, keep you from getting hydrated. Right? Back. How dare you? Although I will say, it's easier you to my like. You coffee cup. It's, no, I didn't. I. I think everyone here knows that we drink a lot of coffee. We drink a lot of coffee, Sarah. Yeah. That's right. why we are hyped up this hey, morning. <laughs> and that cup of coffee tastes a little bit better out there this morning for many folks because it actually feels pretty nice outside this morning. Temperatures in the 60s in Bernie, 64 degrees, 66 in Bulverde, 68 in Holotus, those higher elevations just a touch cooler. It's 60 in Comfort, 62 in Kerrville, and 68 in Hondo. Here in San Antonio, we got down to 70 degrees, the coolest we have been in San Antonio since June 7th. Take a look at your forecast for the day ahead. 79 at 10, 87 at noon, 93 for the high. So it is going to still be a warm one, but humidity will be coming down with those winds from the north at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And that's what we'll talk about in the forecast. Low humidity today, warm, but comfortable through Tuesday, actually, and more nice mornings like the one we're seeing out there right now. It is, however, going to be a dry and warm week. I really don't see any rainmakers in the forecast. And we'll talk about how we're starting to count down to the annular solar eclipse. I'll show you what that's going to look like in the sky on October 14th and the path that it's going to cut right through the hill country and San Antonio. Max. Thank you, Sarah. We now know one man is dead after getting into a fight with a San Antonio police officer. This happened a little after nine last night on Roosevelt Avenue at the restaurant Nietzsche's Comida. SAPD Chief McManus says the suspect tried to rob the restaurant with a knife. That's when several employees chased the suspect out of the restaurant, and that's when that confrontation began. So Chief McManus says the suspect who was holding holding a large knife, confronted the officer, and the officer had to use, quote, deadly force. The suspect was then shot and killed. We do expect more information through the week, so just stay with us on air and online. A chase across county lines involving a murder suspect ended with gunfire at a Walmart. This happening on the city's northwest side. San Antonio police say the incident happened just before 9 last night in the 8300 block of Bandera. So initially, Bandera County was chasing a suspect who was wanted on a murder warrant. That turned into a chase coming into Bear County. The suspect stopped their car at the Walmart and started firing with the Bandera officer. The suspect was shot by police and was taken to the hospital. This is a developing story. We'll bring you more updates as they become available. And a woman dead after police found her in her vehicle with two gunshot wounds to the back of the head. Police investigating to see if this shooting is related to a crash. So this happened a little after nine last night. This is Buena Vista Street. That's between Commerce and Northwest 24th, not too far from Our Lady of the Lake. Well, San Antonio police tell us they found two vehicles involved in the crash. They initially thought the drivers had left the scene, but instead they found one of the drivers, that woman lying face down in her car with two gunshot wounds to the back of the head and the car's headrest. If you have any information on what happened, if you saw anything, heard anything, you're asked to call police immediately. Well, after months of high profile buildup and a two week trial, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton has been acquitted. Only two Republicans had voted to impeach Paxton. After the acquittal, the state Senate voted to dismiss four other articles of impeachment that were brought up by the House but not considered during the trial. So despite yesterday's ruling, Paxton still faces felony security fraud charges in a separate FBI investigation. So state Republicans and Democrats voiced their frustrations with the trial after it ended. Millions of dollars were wasted because the House was on a mission without considering what it was going to take to get there. They set the objective and then filled in behind it. Republicans of conscience need to have a real deliberation with themselves. 
and understand what's truly happening within their, within their own party. Because what happened to, here today was an absolute travesty, an absolute abrogation of the truth, of justice. And Governor Greg Abbott has remained relatively quiet over the course of this impeachment, but he ended up releasing a statement just a few hours after the final votes came in. So he said, quote, this is from Governor Greg Abbott, the jury has spoken. Attorney General Ken Paxton received a fair trial as required by the Texas Constitution. I look forward to continuing to work with him to secure the border and protect Texas from federal overreach. Well, as we first told you yesterday, the unemployment rate here in and around San Antonio, it's ticked up. And September is Workforce Development Month. To help break all this information down, Adrian Lopez, CEO of Workforce Solutions Alamo, joins us live for Leading Us A this morning. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. How are you all? Doing great. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. We know that you're on a trip, so we do appreciate you taking the time. Love the background, by the way. So yesterday, we talked about the latest unemployment numbers. I believe it came in at 4.3% locally. That's ticked up. Why is that? Yeah, it's a slight uh, uptick from the 4.2 in the previous month. Um, but all con things considering when you think about sort of what's happening in the state. Um, so we're actually a little lower uh, than the state unemployment rate. So the state is about four and a half percent. So we're doing better. But when you look at sort of what's happening from the perspective of increases in the labor force. So for our case, we had about 40,000 people year over year um, that, um, you know, actually, you know, decided to go into the labor force. So we're adding, you know, folks to the labor force that tends to do uh, affect um, the unemployment rate just as well, because not everybody just sort of gets a job automatically the day that they decide to, to get into the labor force. But lastly, sort of this point about uh, job growth, um, Texas has demonstrated over 30 months of increased job growth. So we're producing jobs at a faster rate than we can produce people. That's actually a mirroring of what's happening within the region just as well. So it may seem like, you know, a, a slight issue, but we're not too concerned at the moment. What does the forecast look like and how do we in San Antonio compare to other cities in the national numbers? Yeah, so as I mentioned, uh, we're doing fairly well. Uh, we're probably doing a little bit better than uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area or kind of on par with, with what's going on there, a little lower than uh, or a little higher rather uh, than the Austin, uh, you know, uh, Austin area, uh, probably doing better than the Gulf Coast, which is our friends at, in the Houston area. Um, you know, we're a little bit higher than the national, um, you know, level, but, you know, as I mentioned, we're continuing to sort of uh, fare better than Texas and seeing, um, you know, some continual job growth as well as a group increase in the labor force. So September is Workforce Development Month. Why is that important? And, and for those who may not understand, what is workforce development and what does it have to do with our economy? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, happy Workforce Development Month. Um, you know, workforce is extremely key to the local economy, right, and to the national economy. If you look at, uh, you know, one of the headlines today, uh, what's happening with um, the auto worker strike um, with the big three, you know, automakers here in, in the U.S., that really sort of highlights the importance of a balance between sort of what happens with economic development, business development, and workforce, right? Those things to actually churn together um, or to work well together, you know, continues to churn the economy, right? It produces new jobs, um, you know, definitely has, um, you know, an impact on the overall sort of economy. Um, and so Workforce Development Month offers the opportunity for us, for us to recognize all the efforts associated with what happens within the ecosystem, what happens in the K-12, what happens in Alamo colleges, for example, or college district or universities, also with our local nonprofits that all produce uh, some level of, you know, pipeline to feed, you know, the, the jobs and the needs that, that are needed in, in our local employers. And because you brought up the worker strike for the big three American auto workers, how could a strike like that, how could that impact our labor force here locally? Well, when we have, um, you know, major manufacturers like Navistar, Caterpillar, Holdcat, 
um, you know, Toyota, those are, are those are probably going to potentially benefit from the fact that there's something going on uh, negatively in in other parts of the uh, the country, right? Um, you know, we we've had uh, we've all experienced sort of kind of this issue, which uh, supply issue, uh, supply chain issues uh, over the last few years, right? And in some instances, um, it was difficult for people to find a, a brand new car, right, because of all of those issues. Uh, what with Toyota and others continuing to, you know, operate, they potentially have an economic advantage over some of those other companies that uh, have strikes. Okay, so for anyone watching that might be needing a job, looking for a job, um, what is the best way for them to find a job and maybe like what areas um, are doing really well that have a lot of jobs open right now? Yeah, if you notice the background here, we have some banners associated with the industries that we're supporting, construction, aerospace, oil and gas, manufacturing, you know, and others. They continue to produce jobs, um, tons of jobs, um, you know, and, and, you know, one of the things that's really quite fascinating about work, our work here at Workforce Solutions Alamo is that if you don't have the skill set, if you don't have the education, it doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have real opportunity to get into one of these good paying uh, jobs in these industries that we support. So for anybody looking for an opportunity, we would uh, invite them to go to our website at WorkforceSolutionsAlamo.org or to call our helpline at 210-224-4357. All right, Adrian Lopez, thank you so much for starting your morning with us. We really appreciate your time. Anyone who missed any part of that interview, you can watch the whole thing in its entirety on ksat.com. Time now, 811, 71 degrees. Still ahead, a new massive Hollywood production studio gets the OK in the Hill Country. They're going to be breaking ground soon, so more about Hill Country Studios. Plus, this is an awesome story. An activist for Mexican Americans during the time of segregation, how her legacy is being remembered in a very special way. San Antonio residents' face is now on the side of a quarter. So Juvita Idar was an activist fighting for Mexican Americans during a time of segregation. More people can now learn about her legacy now that the U.S. Mint and Smithsonian made her part of the American Women's Quarter program. So making her the first Tejana featured on U.S. currency. So she was born in Laredo in 1885 and spent the second half of her life on San Antonio's west side. So she was a journalist, an activist, a suffragist, and advocated for the rights of Mexican Americans. She talked about everything, the lynchings, the discrimination that was going on, the school segregation, um, the just the unfairness of, of the social structure of that time period. Very courageous for the time. Absolutely. And today there will be a musical celebration of her life at Market Square. From noon to four, we have more information on her legacy and more events and happenings on Hispanic Heritage Month also on KSAT.com. That is an awesome story. And for anyone who wants to go out to Market Square to celebrate, it feels like it's going to be a perfect day to do it's it. It's going to be a great day. Now, it is going to be a little warm, right? It's not going to be cool outside, but humidity will be coming down. Well, what's our new cool, I was going to say, <laughs> it's know. cooler compared to that 107 number. It's true. It's true. Temperatures will be in the 90s, uh, low 90s Ooh. for the high. So that's not all that bad. But hey, we are starting to count down the days to the annular solar eclipse on October 14th. So that is just 27 days away. The path of an annular solar eclipse will move through San Antonio and the Hill Country. Now an annular solar eclipse is when the moon moves in front of us, the sun. This is the way it looks. That moon moves in front of the sun, but it appears a little smaller than the sun. And so a ring of fire Yes, cue that Johnny Cash song. It starts to form in the sky. So we're going to see that again on October 14th, Saturday. The path of the uh, annular eclipse will first cut through Midland, Odessa, making it to the Hill Country in San Antonio by about 1150 in the morning on Saturday, October 14th, as uh, it'll move through areas like Kerrville, Utopia, Yavali, Hondo, Bandera, Divine, Pearsall, Seguin, and New Braunfels are going to be on the edge of the path, and then it'll be moving through Beeville and to Corpus Christi and eventually the Gulf of Mexico by the early afternoon there on October 14th. Let's hope for clear skies. 
You know, October is one of those months where we oftentimes get clouds in the morning. And again, that would be happening right around 1150. So uh, it's possible to see some clouds. More on that right now on KSAT.com. All you got to go do is look up KSAT and Eclipse, and you can see the times of the eclipse right through your neighborhood. 71 degrees outside right now. It feels amazing out there. Just a little humid, but temperatures are in the low 60s in parts of the hill country. It's 64 in Rock Springs, 62 in Kerrville, low 70s south of San Antonio. You, as we zoom in a little bit closer, it's 73 at Stinson, 73 in Castroville, 71 in Gonzales, 69 in Hello to 64 in Bernie and only 60 degrees in comfort. But a quick warm up in store for us today. At least we're not going to be in the triple digits by 10 79 degrees. So spending the morning in the 70s here by noon 87 already going to be pretty toasty in the early afternoon in the low 90s and then 93 for the high. If you step outside, it feels good because it's right near 70 degrees, but it also feels a little humid. The humidity will be coming down a little later in the afternoon. So when we're the hottest, it'll feel feel comfortable outside with low humidity, especially if you can find some shade. All right, here's a look at forecast highs in neighborhoods around South Central Texas today. 94 in Del Rio, 95 in Catula, 91 in Canyon Lake, only 88 in Kerrville and 86 in Rock Springs. Again, higher elevations, touch cooler. Let's take a look at the weather setup. Unlike yesterday, it's quiet across Texas. Yesterday morning we were dealing with some areas of rain. There are areas of rain out to the east as the remnants of Lee continue to push on off to the north and to the east. But unfortunately for us here in San Antonio, high pressure is going to be moving in overhead in the coming days. And so our rain chances are practically a little to no chance for rain in the coming days. Anywhere you see that 10% chance, that's mainly for coastal showers. So looking at the forecast highs this week in the low to mid 90s. Here's some more good news tomorrow morning and Tuesday morning. We may dip down briefly into the 60s in San Antonio. So if you're an early riser like we are, uh, you'll be able to uh, enjoy a little bit of a cooler start to your day tomorrow and Tuesday. Coming up in the forecast. Yeah, some areas got rain yesterday, not San Antonio. But some areas did. I'll show you which neighborhoods in the KSAT 12 viewing area saw some good rain yesterday. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Time now, 820, 72 degrees. San Antonio Airport could soon be seeing more money for infrastructure changes and flight additions still ahead. Where that money could come from and the impact it'll have. We'll be right back. All right, there's a lot of trending right now on KSAT.com. Here's one of the ones that jumped out to me. It is said to be one of the largest film studios in the country. And get this, it is breaking ground in San Marcos earlier in early next year. Uh, Hill Country Studios has secured zoning, even annexation approvals from the city of San Marcos. I'll call this according to the Austin Business Journal. So studios come to Texas. That's awesome. So the studio's website describes the project as an 800,000 square foot studio facility that will sit on 200 acres of breathtaking hill country. Oh, we got to throw the good adjectives in there. There we go. Studio officials expect there will be 12 sound stages, mm -hmm. four workshops, and more than 200,000 square feet of production office space at this new location. I don't want to go to the Kendra Scott stories for, for a second. Okay. So if you're a studio, why wouldn't you want to come to Texas? We have the land. It's cheaper to buy it no here. No taxes. No taxes. <laughs> it is not cheap to make movies. Why not cut costs moving to a state that lets oh, you do it Oh, more Californians coming to Texas to do business? Shocked. <laughs> fair. Definitely fair. All right. Now to Kendra Scott. Okay, so Kendra Scott, it's coming to Target. So the announcement was made this week. It'll be long term with an exclusive collection dropping in stores and online on October 22nd. Okay, I have, I'm not really. You know what Kendra Scott I is. I know what it is yeah. and I'm very impressed. Texas uh, homegrown company, mm -hmm. love it. Collection will include, oh, this is pretty cool, more than 200 items. We got earrings, necklaces, rings, ring dishes. I didn't know that was a thing. Jewelry storage, all starting at just $15. The majority will be under $40. Target says the collection will be refreshed multiple times a year. Are you a Kendra Scott person? I'm not, but because I've always thought, oh, I can buy jewelry that looks similar for way cheaper because I thought it was always very $15 expensive. to $40 seems I pretty know. affordable. I know, so, and I love Target. Target gets me mm. every time. You go in for toilet paper, cat food, and... Prosecco, and you come out with 80 bucks of I have a, jewelry. A, I have a question. 
You don't Essentials. have Essentials. You don't have a cat. No. Why are you <laughs> cat food? <laughs> okay, I have like kind of cats. They 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 can. I don't know what the time now is. Eight twenty six. 72 degrees. I swear. <laughs> Judge, I'm not a cat. <laughs> Let's take a live look out at the Alpha City. It is a gorgeous start. I think we're a little loopy because we're happy we're not seeing triple digits Absolutely. out there. Absolutely. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for a full forecast in just a few moments. Good morning. Welcome back. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, September 17th. Football Sunday. It is football Sunday. It has been a what, quite a weekend for football. I got to say, we started Friday night, obviously, Friday Night Lights, but UTSA played Friday night and it, yesterday college football. Today, Sarah Spivey, we got NFL action. We do. We do. Uh, and it is going to be a, a good day to utilize that back patio if you have one nice. because temperatures are going to be warm. It's going to be in the 90s, but the humidity will be coming down in the afternoon. It's 71 degrees outside right now. It actually feels great outdoors. If you can just briefly maybe have your coffee outside or go for a walk, take advantage of it. In fact, this morning, here's a look at this morning's lows. Temperatures are a little up from this now, but actually in San Antonio, we got down into the 60s for the first time since early June, since June 7th to be exact. That's 102 days. The coolest we've been. Signs that the seasons are changing even though it's still hot in the afternoons. It was 63 in Bernie, 61 in Kerrville, 66 in Bulverde, and 68 in Rio Medina. Now, as I mentioned, it's still going to be a warm one today, though. Uh, we'll be getting up to 87 by noon, so quick warm up under mostly sunny skies. And then in the afternoon, a few more clouds and 93 for the high, uh, partly cloudy skies for us. Coming up in the forecast, I'll show you where the rain fell yesterday, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, the, the pretty warm week ahead. Those details coming up. Sarah, Max. Sarah, thank you. A San Antonio driver is currently under investigation for a DWI after hitting a motorcyclist with his car. So this happened at about 1.30 this morning at the intersection of Lock Hill Selma and Warsbach Parkway. San Antonio police say a man riding his motorcycle was making a turn when a driver hit and killed him. That driver is cooperating with police an investigation is underway to see if the driver was intoxicated while driving. So this is a developing story. We'll give you more updates on air and online. San Antonio police tell us an 18 year old was shot while in his own home. All of this in the aftermath of a drive by shooting. So this happened just before 4 a.m. today. Now, police found several shell casings on the street. That victim was shot in the arm. He was taken to the hospital. He is expected to be OK, but right now police still investigating, trying to figure out who exactly pulled the trigger why and if they can find them. And speaking of shootings, we have a big update to that shooting. We first told you about on Wednesday that ended with one man shot and killed on the city's west side. We now know the identity thanks to the Bear County Medical Examiner. 30 year old Juan Garcia died from a gunshot wound to the chest. Now, this happened just before 11 p.m. This is the 100 block of San Nicholas Walk. Uh, that's near South Hamilton Avenue. Now, police say the victim was fighting with someone else. Witnesses say they heard multiple gunshots, then saw a man running away. At last check, still no arrests have been made in connection with the shooting. A man has been arrested and charged with murder and aggravated assault with a weapon causing serious bodily injury in Seguin. So after an argument with his brother turned deadly, police in Seguin say 22-year-old Travel Simmons allegedly stabbed his brother following an argument. Police in Seguin responded to the 1100 block of Clark Drive, where they found the 26 year old Terry Simmons with multiple stab wounds. Terry was transported to a hospital here in San Antonio, where he later died from his injuries. Travel Simmons is taken into custody and is being held at the Guadalupe County Jail. And police investigating after a man showed up to West, a Westside Baptist emergency room with a gunshot wound. Now that man, the victim, telling police he was on South Navidad Street. That's when he heard a gunshot and realized that he was the one who was shot. He was shot in the leg. The victim started knocking on doors, looking for help. Eventually, a woman saw him struggling, took him to the hospital. Police say they are still investigating, but there's not much to go on in terms of a suspect. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers are asking for your help in finding a person responsible for a deadly hit and run back on July 1st. This happened the 1500 block of North Main Avenue. 
38 year old Raimundo Solis was walking across Main Avenue when he was struck by a driver in a gray or silver 2018 or 2022 Honda Accord. Solis died at the hospital. The driver will be charged with failure to stop and render in resulting in death when caught. If you have any information, you are asked to contact Crime Stoppers. That number on the bottom of your screen right there, 210-224-STOP. Well, San Antonio International Airport could soon see big changes from their infrastructure to flight additions. So our every, Avery Everett explains where the money could be coming from and the impact it will have on people traveling through. Yeah. A normal day at the San Antonio International Airport is usually a long day. It winds up being uh, uh, a, a half and half a day traveling ordeal versus sometimes almost an entire day. Roger and Rosemary Thompson are traveling back from Atlanta, but they first had to stop in Dallas. Yes, we'd love to see go more direct flights. And it's something San Antonio business groups are advocating to change. San Antonio is um, okay, but has a lot of room for improvement in direct flights. Right now, San Antonio offers 40 direct flights with a nonstop to Philadelphia coming next summer. But the airport says they're hoping to add more soon. It's an ever evolving effort. Favorite Just this week, City Council passed its $3.7 billion spending plan for fiscal year 2024. As KSAT reported, the airport system requested more funding for capital projects than last year. This in an effort to tackle new airport additions. It's a plan to draw in more passengers and eventually more direct flights. The number of people that want to use this airport, um, this entire region is expanding. San Antonio has its sights set on one specific flight, and that's to DCA, or the Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport. So why hasn't the seventh largest city secured this flight yet? Well, that's because Congress has to approve certain flights to that airport, and San Antonio hasn't yet made the cut. San Antonio is really the gateway to South Texas. Having more direct flight options just increases that economic activity. Starting the expansion is step one. One. But to the Thompson family, even though it was, you know, it was a uh, not a direct flight, but it wasn't too bad. Just hearing the idea gets their hopes up. It comes down to maybe you get a half a day more to spend with your grandkids, you know, yeah. and for for grandparents that means a lot to us. <laughs> Construction for the new terminal is set to start in 2024, with liftoff happening in 2028. For a breakdown of what that expansion could look like, you can head on over to ksat.com. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Well, Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputy found shot and unconscious in his patrol car yesterday. Now, the Sheriff's Department says the 30 year old deputy was in his uniform on duty when he was shot. He was then pronounced dead at the hospital. Now, L.A. Sheriff Robert Luna says it appears to have been a targeted shooting. So far, investigators still investigating, but no suspect has been apprehended. The U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration has released thermal video footage of the moment law enforcement spotted Pennsylvania prison escapee. So 34 year old convicted murderer Daniello Calvacante evaded capture for two weeks after breaking out of the prison. There's a lot of national coverage of this. This footage was shot Tuesday night. Kind of hard to see there. It shows the moment, however, that he was spotted because of his body heat. He first appeared as a small white spot that you can kind of see on your screen there and moves around to capture a clearer view of a human figure. You can see it more right there. He's now held in maximum security facility in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. And in Southern Illinois, about 30 inmates, some of the felons back on the streets after they were released Friday ahead of a new Illinois state law ending cash bail. That law set to begin tomorrow. So in June, Illinois became the first state in the nation to eliminate cash bail for most offenses. Another 30 inmates are set to be released today. They've all been issued court dates with notices to appear. It's NFL Sunday, so we're talking about the safety of artificial turf following Aaron Rodgers' injury. That's right. Got a lot of attention. Many expect that will keep him sidelined for the season. He tore an Achilles, just like both of us oh, did. I full, know. Full rupture. Full rupture. So it'll be interesting to see the timeline. As ABC's Jacqueline Lee shows us, artificial grass, well, it's really not popular amongst a lot of NFL players. This morning, the debate over artificial turf's place in the NFL is heating up following what appears to be Aaron Rodgers' season-ending Achilles injury. But now, some are blaming his injury on the use of artificial turf, fueling calls by some players and their union to switch fields to natural grass. 
NFL Players Association Executive Director Lloyd Howell saying in a statement, moving all stadium fields to high quality natural grass surfaces is the easiest decision the NFL can make. The players overwhelmingly prefer it and the data is clear that grass is simply safer than artificial turf. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell speaking out on the issue in an interview with ESPN. We want to go on what's the best from an injury standpoint to prevent the injuries to give our players the best best possible surface to play on. A letter sent in April by the Players Association President J.C. Treader highlights data he says show injury rates on synthetic surfaces were higher than on natural surfaces for six consecutive years. But the NFL found a different conclusion from the same study, arguing the injury rate was virtually the same in 2021 for both turf and grass. These are the type of things that the National Football League and the Players Association are going to have to figure out. They're going to have to talk it out. They're going to have to have meetings. Uh, and this is something that's not going to go away. Many players now echoing the Players Association's call for a move to grass surfaces. Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty simple. The numbers say that grass is healthier for the players, and so I want to play on the best surface that will keep me healthy. The position I play, I would prefer grass any day. Eli Manning, who spent his career at MetLife, the same stadium as the Jets, taking a different stance. I think the turf, you know, it gives you a reliable feel all the time. Jacqueline Lee, ABC News, New York. Okay, so this morning you mm -hmm. sent me I did. a tweet about how they're it's an innovative surgery that Aaron, Aaron Rodgers, Rodgers is undergoing. It's called the Speed Bridge, and it essentially connects it faster than what you had gotten because you got Achilles surgery. Yeah, but I, my Achilles was ruptured lower. Right, his, his was is where higher. yours was, right. higher by the calf. We need to call our doctor I know. So, <laughs> and so ask the, him about The idea is that he's... There's mm, cautious optimism that he could return if the Jets make the playoffs By and go on a, on a long playoff run. I think there's no way. There's I think no it's, a, way. it's a moot point because I don't think the Jets are going that far in the playoffs Dang. anyway. Well, the Jets played the Cowboys today, so we'll see. Yeah, time now, 842, <laughs> 73 degrees. 73 degrees already warming up. Sarah Spivey will have our forecast when we come back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. All right, 74 degrees. Yeah. It feels so good to even say that. I know, and, and just a couple hours ago, we were actually in the 60s in San Antonio. So, yeah, we got down to our coolest morning in, since early June, and the only thing that could be better is a little bit of rain, but the rain went all around San Antonio ah! yesterday. <laughs> I know, here's a look at the drought monitor. Uh, you don't need to be reminded that we need rain. There's very little to no soil moisture out there. We've got exceptional drought from Kerrville down to San Antonio. Antonio up toward Austin, New Braunfels and Bryan College Station. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you yesterday's rainfall. OK, I'm going to step off so you can see this. Boop, right around San Antonio. Literally, we saw showers and storms up into the hill country, even around New Braunfels. But the heaviest and the healthiest of the rain did fall near to Austin area. Uh, just uh, a little bit closer to San Antonio, you can see that New Braunfels got a little rain. Also, Wilson County closer to Sutherland Springs and into parts of Carnes and DeWitt counties as well. Unfortunately, though, rain is not going to be something that's really in our forecast over the next several days. It's quiet across the state of Texas right now. Any rain is across the Appalachian Mountains and the remnants of Lee are pushing off into the northern Atlantic. We, however, are going to be seeing a high pressure system move over Texas. Now, over the summer, when we showed this high, that meant very, very hot conditions. The good news is we're not going to be too hot. We're still going to be hot with highs in the low to mid 90s, but I do not anticipate us getting into the triple digits. The bad news is high means dry. And as you look at the potential rainfall through Friday, it will be staying dry in south central Texas and San Antonio. There there will be some rain from Mexico and there will be some rain for parts of northern Texas, but not for us here in San Antonio. So when we look at rain chances over the next few days. Uh, the best we can do is perhaps a coastal shower or storm. That's what the 10% chance is for there. Otherwise, it is going to be a dry week. I hope you were able to enjoy this morning. It's still 60s. Uh, it's still in the 60s in the hill country. 66 in Kerrville, 68 in Rock Springs, 71 in New Braunfels, 75 in Del Rio, still 68 degrees in Hondo. And you can see as we get a little closer to San Antonio here, the higher elevations just a smidge cooler. Bulverde at 68 
28 degrees right now. Uh, all in all, a nice morning. And if you get up early uh, in the morning, tomorrow morning and Tuesday morning is going to be great too. Temperatures should dip down into the 60s, close to the average of 69 degrees. Uh, so a nice start tomorrow and Tuesday. Our morning lows will be a little bit muggier by Wednesday, Thursday and Friday of this upcoming week. So looking at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, mostly sunny through most of the day. Uh, by noon, it'll be 87. Winds are going to be from the northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. That's going to allow for our humidity to come down. So even when we're at 93 degrees this afternoon for the high, it'll feel pretty nice uh, because of the lower humidity. And again, that 10% chance mainly for some coastal showers there. Otherwise, it's going to be a pleasant evening. Temperatures falling to, into the 70s by about 10 o'clock. Looking at the forecast highs in neighborhoods today, 89 in Bernie. So some folks up in Bernie, Bulverde, Holotus likely going to stay just below 90 degrees today. 94 at Stinson, 92 in Seguin, 93 in Divine, and 92 out in Yavaldi. Take a look at your seven day forecast. Again, not optimistic when it comes to the rainfall, but at least those highs are going to be pretty manageable in the low to mid 90s this week. You, you know, that's our cool front. Yeah, honestly, honestly, it went from 105 plus to 95. That's a 10 degree drop. Makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Time now just about 850, 74 degrees. Before we head to break, let's take a look at some events happening today. The San Antonio Botanical Garden inviting you to join them to experience a live concert performed by William Beckman from 7 to 10 o'clock tonight. The artist brings sounds from vintage country, Latin Americana music. Right now, tickets are on sale on their website for $40. And some more music, a free concert hosted by the King William Association, also happening today. The Dirty River Jazz Band playing at the Home Beautify San Antonio Park. Now that is located 801 South Main. That's between Johnson and Sheridan Street. Starts at 5.30, ends at 6.30, so be there on time. Make sure to bring friends, family, and you can listen to some traditional jazz. And if you're going to an urgent care or emergency room, can be a crucial decision to make for your health, time, and money. So coming up tomorrow in GMSA, KC, KSAT producer Haley Powers explains where you should go get certain health issues treated. Welcome back. The 10th annual Head for the Cure 5K and Walk is next weekend, and this is an event near and dear to our hearts here at KSAT. It's held all in honor of our late news director, Jim Boyle. He passed away after battling brain cancer. Head for, your cure, head for the Cure 5K and Walk next Saturday, September 23rd. Of course, it begins at 8 a.m. at Providence Catholic High School, right on at North St. Mary Street, just across from our KSAT 12 studios. Right now, participants can receive $5 off the registration fee. We have a very creative promo code. It's KSAT. You enter it in, you get $5 off. Easy to remember. Okay, KSAT community is partnering with the San Antonio Food Bank to help squash hunger during Hunger Action Month this September. So join us for a KSAT Community Town Hall this Friday, September 22nd, where we'll be speaking with leaders from the Food Bank and learn how you can give back. We will live stream the town hall, ksat.com from 2.30 to 3.30. 75 degrees outside right now. We'll take a look at the forecast over the next few days. Not too hot, highs in the low to mid 90s. And in fact, tomorrow morning and Tuesday morning, it's gonna feel great outside with temperatures dipping down into the 60s with low humidity. That's about it. All we have to really look forward to in the forecast is the comfortable mornings the next couple mornings and the fact that highs are not going to be in the triple digits. There is no major chance for rain over the next several days. Still waiting for uh, that big ring to help us out with the drought and nothing in the near future for us, unfortunately. Okay, before we go, Cowboys play, I think, at 325 today. Mm -hmm. Cowboys or Jets? It's Cowboys. Cowboys. The Cowboys are going to win probably because, you know, the Jets are all up in the air with their offensive line and stuff. And Aaron Rodgers, you know, has the same situation we dealt with. Yeah. yeah. Fun stuff. All right. Thank you so much for starting your Sunday with us. Have a great rest of your day. Go Cowboys.